everybody, it is Quicken and welcome back to Tattoo Talk Tuesday. So if it was your very first time joining us, Tattoo Talk Tuesday is our weekly interactive talk show where I take viewer submitted questions and try to lend my experience to you guys as a tattoo collector. So this week is actually pretty funny. I posted a little question on my Instagram story for you guys to answer, asking what you wanted to see on Tattoo Talk Tuesday this week. The question was asked to me to talk about tattoo aging, and I thought it would be really cool to talk about some of my oldest tattoos. And it's kind of funny because last night I was watching Homecoming, and I was looking at this tattoo in my arm, the Love Kills Slow tattoo, and how much it is generally faded more than my other tattoos, and I was just looking at it. And I think it's great timing to talk about this question, so I thought I would just go down the list of my five oldest tattoos and just talk about how they faded and just how they've aged and changed with my body and just talk about my theories on why they look this way. So hang out with me today and we'll talk about my five oldest tattoos. So I don't want this video to come out too negative. Like these are pieces that have existed on my body with me for I don't know, like more than 12 years, some of them. So they are a part of my body, but almost like a family member, I feel a little open about critiquing them. Don't feel any sort of sense of negativity. I'm definitely okay with all of my tattoos. And if they're still on my body, then I want them. So I just wanted to like a little bit put that out there because I don't want to be like, and this part. And you'd be like, no, like, my tattoo looks like that. Like, it's not that at all. So the first tattoo I ever got, I got when I was 16. And I got it with parental consent, despite what is written in Inked Magazine. My mom signed a paper and a man gave me a tattoo. But my first tattoo I got when I was 16 was a gray wash manatees tattoo, two manatees together. And I actually had that tattoo removed. I wasn't going to include it in this list, which I had to write down because I don't know my body well enough. But I thought I would include it because the tattoo I was able to get removed almost entirely with just one session. And I guess lastly, when is my next appointment? Like, am I happy with the results? And I am. It's funny, like, now that I'm getting, like, the tattoo on my back removed, I'm kind of excited to have like that space be available. This is kind of a unique situation. Gray wash tattoos do remove a lot easier than your standard like super saturated color bold tattoo. But I had the tattoo removed so I could get a back piece and this tattoo wasn't really my vibe and it was completely in the way. And I've thought about like getting it again somewhere else, but for right now, the tattoo was removed very, very easily. There is a little bit of like a remnant of it back there. And I think the next time I go to get tattoo removal, I think if he just like did a little bit of the like tiny little parts that you can still kind of see, I think it would be a full removal. But I'm really satisfied with how much of it is gone and how much my tattoo artist was able to cover when I got the back piece. I think a lot of that has to do with, I got it when I was 16, so I kept growing and it was right on my back. So like the sun was being exposed to it. It was, you know, about 10 years old when I got it removed and it was a really light tattoo. So that tattoo is gone and I'm fine with that. So the next tattoo I have is the sugar skull on my hip. So this is a tattoo I don't really talk about or show off or particularly like. I'll tell you about it and why I think it has changed so much since I got it. I don't know if I have a picture of it fresh, but I think by looking at it, you can tell how much it has changed. So I think one of the reasons this tattoo failed is because it doesn't have a lot of structure. It doesn't have a lot of like dark lines that hold it in place. So I think a lot of the colors just have like 
faded and bled away. And there are parts of the tattoos that aren't even outlined at all that I think are crucial again to like the structure of the tattoo. There are also some added fine lines in the tattoo and I don't have any other fine line detailed tattoos, so definitely leave in the comments if you have any fine line tattoos, where they are on your body and how long you've had them. Because I think the next part of this tattoo that I'm gonna describe is why I asked why it's on your, where it is on your body, because this tattoo is right on my hip, but not on my hip bone, kind of like my upper thigh where all that meat is. And I got this tattoo when I was 18. And I think in the last 10 years, I go between like gaining and losing 50 pounds pretty periodically. And I think that this is a part of my body that gets a lot of that like slack. My hips and my butt are where I carry a lot of my extra weight. So between gaining and losing and fad diets and breakups and beauty school and things like that. I think that part of my body has definitely gotten thrown through the ringer. And I think that hasn't helped the tattoo at all. I feel like when you look at it, you can tell that it's just been moved around a lot and things just seem stretched and then like stuffed back together. So I think that's why this tattoo just like looks a little chewed up. So I had this tattoo done in a walk-in shop. I wasn't super familiar, familiar at all with the artist who gave me this tattoo. Like I said, I got it over 10 years ago and Instagram and any sort of way that I find tattoo artists now did not exist or was not available to me. So I didn't really know like what a healed picture of like one of her tattoos like i didn't have access to that i don't think it's sun damage because this part of my body is rarely ever exposed to the sun there's no freckles in this tattoo so i think it is a combination of not really knowing the tattoo artist and that part of my body just like the next tattoo i have i actually talked about last week and it is the roman numerals on my ankle so i don't have any like big complaints about how this tattoo has healed especially because it is like in a high impact area and an area that like probably is more likely to be exposed to the sun than like my hip tattoo but i would say this tattoo isn't like a crisp black anymore and it since it was done by the same tattoo artist who did my hip i can kind of see in both tattoos that the black is almost like you know changing a little bit it sounds really nitpicky for me to be like well it's more like a green black i think it's just like the ink that she used or you know her technique and whatever like that so i think that this tattoo is fine it is changing i think in the next 10 years i will see that black continue to change but i think a touch-up from like a tattoo artist who I've been tattooed by, so I like the way that their tattoos age, I think would just change that pretty easily. So my next, I have to refer to my list. So my next tattoo is my heart locket and key tattoo. And I'm also just going to include the rose in there as well because I believe I got them next in order. So I'm just gonna talk about them as one tattoo. So this tattoo on me kind of aged the worst. And I know that sounds a little dramatic. I'm sorry, I keep apologizing. I know some of you in the audience are tattoo artists and I'm really not trying to sound like super Hollywood about these tattoos. I, I actually had this tattoo completely 100% reworked. You might remember the video I made a couple years ago about laser tattoo removal and reworks. Cover up already didn't work for me. And because it was such a light purple, there was really nothing you could hide or pretend wasn't there. So removal was my best option. You can kind of see the cobweb when my arm is down. And then the rose is almost completely 100% with only that really dark line right there. So this was the tattoo that was the focus of this video of that video just because this tattoo faded a lot. And for me, because it's the top of my arm and the biggest tattoo on my arm and 
I really do like it. I like how it caps my shoulder. I like the meaning behind it. I like how it looks. I think the tattoo, st the structure of the tattoo is good, but it did start to fade. So this was another tattoo I got in a walk-in shop who I was not familiar with the artist beforehand, but I went to a shop that was nearby my house and it was important that I wanted traditional. It was at this point in my life that I knew the tattoos I wanted from now on. So I was laying down the road work, but I wasn't quite there yet. I had this tattoo completely reworked and what is different about this tattoo is kind of everything. So the originally the inside of this tattoo was red and then this tattoo back here was purple. So I actually had all of the purple that used to be in here removed with the laser tattoo removal and then redone in red. And then this tattoo used to be red and it was so faded that Marcross who reworked this tattoo was able to just put this teal right on top. I love it. It's like a nice oxidized copper. It's beautiful. Mark actually redid everything line for line. He went over every single previous line down to this little ribbon. And I think that the, the tattoo has a lot more structure now. It's a lot darker and deeper and I'm completely satisfied with it. Asking Mark to redo this tattoo was really hard for me because I just think that tattoo artists don't like doing stuff like that and it wasn't his tattoo. And I was just really, really unhappy with it. I had gotten tattooed by Mark three times in a row and asked him about this tattoo each time. It was just on my mind. I was just really unhappy with how it was aging. So I was able to convince Mark to do it. And I believe it took us three sessions. Like it was tough and expensive. Getting a tattoo reworked is going to cost more money than the tattoo the first time or doubly because you already paid for a tattoo already that you didn't like. I love the tattoo now. I will say that I, I am a freckled person and my body freckles a lot as well as my face. So I think that freckles did have some sort of part in this. Like you can kind of see in the teal how it almost looks like it has texture, but at a second glance, like all of that is freckling. I do freckle a lot in my arms. I would say I'm pretty responsible with skincare and sunscreen. I would say like, seven out of 10 responsible. And even in the summer, I'll wear like a light sweater sometimes or like UV protective clothing. So I think I'm pretty good with that, but this tattoo just really had faded a lot and I was pretty unhappy with it. So the next tattoo in sequence of getting tattoos would be this diamond on the inside of my arm. And it was done by the same artist. And I would say that it's just fading and aging the same way this tattoo did with a lot of the lines kind of lightening up. And I think just the structure of the tattoo is kind of faded a little bit as well. It's becoming a little less legible, I feel. A lot of times like people will ask me if this is a bruise and it's, it's a sawdust and diamonds tattoo. I love the tattoo. I love the little branches and the little cherry right here. It's amazing. And I think it does look like a wild diamond. Like it's not the like kind of structured like diamond supply diamond. I, I really do love the tattoo. I do think that a touch up would make me super excited about this tattoo, but it just does live inside my arm. I love how it fits right here. Like that gets me going for days, this like perfect little. So I'm happy with the tattoo. I just think a little bit of a touch up, like a little bit of going over the black would really just bring it up to the standard of the rest of the tattoos on my body. But it's an older tattoo, so that's how it's going. And like I said, if my weight fluctuated that much, this is kind of a place where that could be experienced, that like stretching. So the last tattoo is the tattoo that I have a lot of similar things to say and I really do want touched up. So this tattoo was the first tattoo like on my lower arm, my first like you can't really cover up with a short sleeve shirt tattoo, my like visible tattoo achievement. And it's this love kill slow tattoo. And I think this tattoo has faded significantly and I have become more and more self-conscious of it 
lately. I would love to get it reworked or even just like touched up. But like I said, I just have a really hard time asking tattoo artists to touch up tattoos for me. I feel really bad, <laughs> but I think having my tattoos reworked is kind of the next step for me especially as someone who, you know, got their feet wet with getting tattoos without a ton of like research or thoughts about the future. And now that I think about that stuff, I still have some of those tattoos that I, I really, really like, but just like aren't there. So the Love Kills Slow tattoo, you can kind of see the lettering. The middle of the letters is kind of just like falling out a little bit. The tattoo doesn't have like too much blowout. I'm really happy about that. Like I'm happy with the structure of the tattoo, but it is fading a lot. And surrounded by tattoos of like tattoo, tattoo artists I really, really like and respect and like sought out. It kind of just like looks so light compared to my other tattoos. Like I have this Mike Adams tattoo right above it and the contrast between them. I feel like is noticeable. Not really, but I notice it. I'll do things like put oil on this tattoo and exfoliate it and things like that to like really, you know, make it bright. But at this point, it's clear that it's just like needs to be touched up. Exfoliate it healed. I never exfoliated it while it was healing. I exfoliate it now, 10 years later. One thing that I would love to do sooner than sooner than later is to start getting my tattoos touched up or reworked a little bit by tattoo artists who i love to bring more of a like cohesive standard to my tattoos i love the aging process of tattoos and for a lot of my tattoos like it is really interesting like I recently did a video about how my tattoos are kind of freckling and getting freckles through them and that's not a problem I have with the tattoos I just mentioned, but it is different than this tattoo just being significantly lighter than the rest of my tattoos. Like even my cardinal, which I had gotten probably next in sequence, is still much darker than this tattoo. You know what I mean? So that's just uh, how I feel maybe kind of particular, but if you get to this place where in 10 years, some of your tattoos are just changing and others aren't, I think that it's a good indicator that you got some really good tattoos and some other tattoos that are just, you know, a little lighter, different inks that are just breaking down a little differently. I said it, I think a hundred times, but I do love the tattoos I have, except for the sugar skull. <laughs> I just want them to like kind of pop and at least look like my other tattoos to bring more of a uniformity to everything. That's a personal choice though. I meet people all the time who love their broken in, aged, beat up tattoos and I love that for them too. The tattoo on my ankle though, like I like that. I, you know, I probably won't get that touched up. A lot of people ask me if I'm getting the sugar skull removed and I just think it'll be too hard because I don't think about it too often. Removing yellows I think is particularly difficult with tattoo removal. And I've thought about getting a cover up. I wanted the like Luna P ball, the like Luna ball from Sailor Moon, but I kind of just thought like a big fucking purple on my hip wouldn't really work out. So for now it stays but these have been my tattoos and how they have aged. Let me know in the comments if you have any similar stories because I'm starting to feel like a diva up here and I, I don't like it, so let me know. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you wanna submit a question for next week. Otherwise, you can always leave your questions down below. My Instagram is quietcoolkid. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I make videos like this every Tuesday. If you are new and you would like to check out my other videos in the Tattoo Talk Tuesday playlist, I'll have that link down below. There's over a hundred episodes of Tattoo Talk Tuesday on there. And I will leave any of the mentioned videos linked down below in the description. I have videos talking about freckling and all of this laser and removal and redo. Anyway, I love you guys so, so much. Until next time, bye.